Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to pay a non-PO invoice such as this one in Agibuy. The first thing that you want to do is log on to SSO. Then click on Agibuy. And your home screen may not look like this when you first sign on to Agibuy. And the new version of Agibuy you can set whichever screen you like as your home page. So this is the one that I have set as my home page. You can set yours by clicking on your name up here and then clicking set my home page. Wherever you are when you log on, you can get to the the screen where you pay non-PO invoices the same way. You put your mouse over this little thing that looks like the Parthenon over here and go over to AP Dashboard and click on that. And if you pay non-PO invoices with any regularity at all, you might want to do yourself a favor and click this little star right here. And if you haven't already bookmarked this page, there'll be an option that says bookmark this page, which you can click. And then from then on, you'll be able to get to this page really easily by just clicking on the star and then clicking on that page. The next thing you want to do is come down to supplier name and type in the name of your vendor, which you'll get from your invoice. In this case, it's Party Time Rentals. And once you start typing it in, it should start filtering down vendor options, and you can just click on the one that you want, and click Create. And your screen should look like this. If it doesn't, and instead it looks like this, that means that you just need to click on this little link that says View Detailed Manual Entry. And once you've done that once, you should never have to do it again. And the next thing you want to do is go down to the Invoice Name field, which is highlighted, and just delete out the part that's in there already, and put in the vendor dash description of what we're buying. So, in this case, we're paying party time rentals. And we're paying for tablecloths, for display tables, for student work. And then the next field that you want to fill in is the supplier invoice number, which you will also get from the invoice. Uh, as much as possible, you want to make the invoice number look like it does on the invoice because Agubai is set up to automatically check to see if anybody has paid this invoice number to this vendor already to prevent duplicate payments. And the way that we can most consistently do that is to make sure that the invoice number is entered in the same format every time. So if there are any spaces or dashes or leading zeros in the invoice number, you want to include that when you enter it in Agubai. There is a character limit on this field, so if you have a really long invoice number, that's when it's okay to start taking out the spaces and dashes and leading zeros, but unless you reach that character limit, go ahead and enter it as close to how it appears on the invoice as possible. The next thing you want to fill in is the invoice date, which again you'll get straight from the invoice. It defaults to today's date, but you always want to change it to the date on the invoice. And then you can basically ignore all of the rest of these fields. Uh, the business office will take care of those if they come into play. So the next section that you want to look at is the remit to address, which should be the remit to address from your invoice. You want to send the check wherever the vendor asks us to send it, which in that case is this address here. And that's the invoice or that's the address that showed up automatically. And that will usually be the case. Um, if it's not, you can click the little drop-down list here and choose a different name from the list and it'll change the address. But most of the time, the one that you need will be the one that appears. The next thing that you want to look at are these dates over here and these are really important dates because they prevent you from paying interest on your invoice. The state of Texas has 30 days to pay all invoices from the latest of either the goods received date or the invoice received date. 
And if we pay after the, those 30 days, we also pay what's called prompt pay interest, which is money that comes out of your account and gets paid to the vendor as a penalty for us paying the invoice late. Now, if you don't properly record these dates, you might end up paying interest that you shouldn't pay. Um, sometimes a vendor will not send an invoice or not put an invoice in the mail until really late or maybe it got lost in the mail and never made it to us or maybe we didn't get the goods um, until much much later than the invoice date so if you don't fill in these dates correctly the prompt payment interest will be based on your invoice date which will sometimes be a problem so for example say the vendor or say the invoice date was in February but we didn't actually receive the invoice until April then if we're entering it in April we're already past the 30 days and you're gonna wind up paying prompt pay interest but if we didn't get the invoice until April our 30 days doesn't start until April and again if we didn't get the goods until April our 30 days doesn't start until April so it's important to record those dates uh, as accurately as possible on the non PO goods received date it's the day that you finished receiving whatever it is that we're paying for so in this case it would be the day that we returned these tablecloths when we finished renting them so that's going to be 429.14 some other um, sort of tricky goods received dates are subscriptions it's the ending date of the subscription if it's a conference registration it's the ending date of the conference if it's a membership it's the date the membership expires it's the the end of whatever we're paying for is a goods received date the invoice received date is pretty straightforward it's just the date that you received the invoice and in the ideal situation you would have a date stamp on here just to prove that that's when we got it which we do so we'll put in 5114 and then if you have any notes that you want to add about um, say the purpose of whatever we're paying for or attendees at a business meal or just anything that you feel is pertinent to the uh, payment you can include it in the internal notes section here and then again you can ignore this part here the business office will take care of it if it needs to be uh, handled and now this is important click save if you go on to the next part of this process without having clicked save, it will erase everything that you've just done. Learn from my mistakes. Next thing you want to do is click add non-PO item. And you'll leave this PO number field blank and go straight to the product description. And you're just going to put a description of what, what we bought. And it doesn't have to appear exactly as it does on the invoice. You want to put a clear description that will explain what it is that we're buying to somebody who doesn't necessarily know uh, the ins and outs of your particular field. So we don't want to put a sort of complicated part number or for example if you're buying software or something you don't want to put the name of the software you want to put the word software. So in this case we'll just put rental of tablecloths And you can also include more information about the purpose here if you like if you weren't able to fit it in the cart name earlier and then next is the catalog number so if there's like a catalog number or a part number on the invoice you could put it there in this case there's not one so we'll just put a dash there you have to put something so if if there's no catalog number just put a dash and then the quantity we'll get from the invoice we got 11 and the amount is eight dollars and then if you have another item you can click save and add another and it'll give you another line to fill in that information but in this case we only have the one line item so we'll just click save and close and then you want to click on the next little box in our flowchart here review and this is where you'll attach your PDF of your invoice so you want to have that scanned in and make sure you click on the add attachment link that's under internal attachments and you can give it a name here we'll call it invoice and then browse and go to wherever you have the invoice saved 
click save. And then you want to scroll down to the codes section here. And this is where you're going to put the information on the account that you're using to pay the invoice. So click on edit over here on the right. And you probably already have a fiscal year and member ID filled in by default. And you might have a department code filled in by default. If not, you can just type it in. It's 02-CLAR or ARCH or LAUP, whatever uh, the department code is for the account that you're using. And then on the account code, you'll put in the account number that you want to use to pay. And you can just type that in as well. In this case, I'm using 02 511462 five zeros. And if, if you only have the six digit account number, it's a safe bet that you want to put 02 dash and then those six numbers and then a dash and then five zeros. You might have a specific support account number, but if you don't have it, then it's probably just five zeros. And here you can click recalculate and save. And then I'm just going to scroll down, make sure that everything looks right. The total $88 matches up with the total that's on the invoice. Everything looks good to me. So then I'm just going to go up to the top here and click complete. And that's it. You're done. Um, if you have the paper invoice, it's helpful if you write this invoice number here on that invoice and send it down to the business office just because it's better for us to have the original invoice if, if it exists. But if you receive the invoice via email or anything like that, then you don't need to worry about printing out a copy for us. We'll be able to see the attachment in Aggiebuy. If you want to check on the status of this invoice later, you can go back to the AP dashboard and it'll show your recently entered invoices down here and you can click on that and then um, you can click on the approvals tab to see where it is in the approval process um, and you can see who are the possible approvers for it and you can also click on the history tab to see any notes or anything that may have been added um, you can see why it was rejected or changed or anything if, if anything happens to the invoice so that's it if you have any questions you can call or visit the business office